another work light because you can't have enough LED work lights. And this is another of these ones that doubles up as a power bank. And the listing for this uh, actually shows a selection of three different types. You've got one with uh, one big long cob COB LED array and one with two, two of them just but flat panels and then I chose the one with the round ones that have a dome in the front. Um, price was about $12 for all of them. Not, not actually every single one of them but $12 each. And then another interesting thing about these is that they can take um, they take double A's or they can take 18650's. So I'll be checking whether it can actually recharge the double A's. I'm not sure if they will be rechargeable. So here's the light with its Oh, it's hard. Plastic lenses in the front. I thought it was going to be those silicony ones that are uh, soft, but it's not. They're they're hard and they're rattly. Uh, the back has a little handle that hinges up either for carrying it, which is a bit close to the knuckles, or for use as a stand. Um, it's got the USB output, which I'll test for current capacity, and the USB charging input, and then a sort of multi-function button that is presumably going to step through modes. I've not actually tried this, so I don't know. Inside is a battery compartment that can either take two 18650s, which are in parallel, or it takes four double A's. I think that's double A's. Let's say, uh, have I got a double A handy? Have I got a double A handy? Yes, there's a double A. Is it a double A? Yes, it is. So it can take the four double A's, but they're actually all wired in series, giving about six volts. Um, so I wonder how it's actually dealing with that. Let's put our 18650 in. One random 18650. Let's pop that in here and try the modes. So we've got a uh, high output, low output, strobing off. If I hold the button, does it go into SOS mode? I'm holding, I'm holding. No, it doesn't. It's not got the SOS mode. What about the beam angle? Oh, this is, it's not terribly helpful just pointing at the bench here. One moment, I'm just going to... It puts out a big round wash of light. Okay, big round wash of light. Nice technical description. Let's get a couple of cells in just to give this a fair test. So I'm going to check the voltage to make sure these cells all actually match because uh, you don't want to start putting... You don't want to start putting uh, cells in, in, in parallel if they're not matching voltage. So they have to be within... A fairly close specification, about 3.63, it's not much charge in that cell. Let's find one that's got a rough match. Yeah, that's good enough, we'll stick two of them in. So, one and two. Right, let's get the cover off this and stick the, I guess it's probably just active all the time, so we'll stick this in and we'll zoom down onto it. I'm not sure if it'll be in focus, I may have to focus onto this, it's good enough. 5.1 volt, let's get the load tester into it, make sure this is set right down low, plug that in. So the voltage is drooping at 0.6, At 0 0.8, it keeps going down a wee bit. 4.89, it's not too bad. One amp. At one amp, it starts dropping off. Let's see what happens if I keep running it up a little bit higher. And it cuts out. So this is able to put out one amp. That's useful enough. What current does it charge at? Let's get its own lead here. Let's get the... ASDA, or Walmart, power supply here. Hope it stays awake long enough just for me to do this test. So let's plug this lead in here and plug this into there. And it's charging at, uh, started at 390 milliamps. It's gone up to 0.84 amps. So uh, that's all right. That's uh, 800 milliamps charge current, which will probably drop off as it starts heating up. So let's uh, zoom back out and let's do what we really want to do and open this up, take it to bits and see what's inside. It's quite nice. It's quite a robust feeling case. This uh, the yellow plastic feels not rubbery, but it feels sort of 
like a resin, I suppose. Many plastics are sort of resins in a way. Um, I think these are fake. These little uh, things are just for visual effect. I don't think they're actually removable. Let's uh, get a screwdriver. Hopefully this is going to be long enough. We'll pop the batteries out first. Put them over there. This is deep enough. Good. Oh, actually, you know what? I might be talking crap because on the back they do appear to have nuts, but I think that's purely holding this trim on. I don't think it's actually doing anything other than that. I don't think it's holding the thing together. One, two, three, and four screws. I like the fact you can change the 18650s out, or you can uh, put the capacity of your choice in. That makes it much more versatile. Ooh. Right, oh that's a neat circuit board. What are those? Little double gang, are they MOSFETs? I wonder if they're MOSFETs for switching the outputs, not really sure. Oh it does look like it, certainly that one is, because uh, the pins are common together. Then it's got the resistors here. Okay, I shall, uh, we'll get a close up look at that later on. So what about the uh, the battery connections that are going to the circuit board? They're going to different positions on the board, are they? I think they are, maybe not. All right, okay, I shall investigate that later on. Let's take a look at the cob array first. I see a fairly tiny inductor there, so it must be running at a fairly high frequency. Is this going to come out? Ooh, it's a bit sticky. Alright, so it's a circuit board with, with a dual cob arrangement on it with the usual soft, rubbery, silicony coating on it and little bits of black stuff and, and fingerprints now. And each one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 chips in it, so a total of 24 LEDs when it's uh, it's running, although ultimately it's more important to know just what the current is. And uh, the lenses are, do they pop out of that? No, they're uh, locked in. They're sort of slipped into that and uh, I wonder if they go in from the front. Oh, they do. They go in with those screws there. That's quite interesting. It does also suggest that maybe the one with the square frame the front, although this this Moulding uh, is for the round bit, so maybe it's just got a different moulding. Let's uh, leave that off then. Oh, well, I'm not sure what these were for. Oh, I know what that's for. That's a sort of clicky mechanism as you rotate it round against that ratchet there. Okay, that's interesting enough. One of them, uh, at one side it's just applying brake pressure to it, I'm guessing, and the other one's got the little indent bit. Right, let's uh, take this out and investigate it. I may have to pause while I go and look up what these chips are. It does look like it's actually been made in a very sort of, almost like a modular manner with those chips. Is that going to come out? As I have I missed a screw? I don't think I've missed a screw. Or is it the connections on the other side? I don't think there's connections on the other side. I think it's just going to be a button. Oh, right, okay, so the micro USB, let's zoom down to this. It's a little standoff circuit board to bring it flush with the other USB. It's got a fairly decent clicky button there. It's got the uh, vertical USB outlet socket, which is connected, uh, it's getting power from uh, this switch, I'm guessing, is the main sort of power bank chip, and this will be the uh, inductor for that. I'm guessing, and this is just guessing at the moment, that this is probably a little microcontroller, an anonymous microcontroller maybe, uh, which is then driving this MOSFET, which is then driving the LED output. Okay, right, uh, give me a second and I shall take a closer look at this. The reverse engineering is done and it's actually quite an interesting circuit board. The chip here is the power bank type chip. It's made by T-Power, it's called the TP4333. And notable things, there's the output to the USB port, there's the two LEDs that show charging and discharging. 
Um, it does seem to have the function implemented with basically just one pin to have an external light for, I guess, use as a flashlight with an external button. With a protective resistor and sears the button so you're not shorting that output. Um, and other than that, just a small inductor and that's it. It's a typical minimalist um, power bank type chip. And so that's this here and there's its little inductor. When it's uh, discharging, I tried charging another power bank with it, used the thermal imaging camera. This was getting fairly warm but not excessively warm. The components surrounding that are um, some little decoupling capacitors and power capacitors. So these are a parallel pair and these are parallel pair. One the output and one the input basically. It's very simple. Things that are really interesting about this. Well, let's take a look at the LED control circuitry first. We've got a dual MOSFET. It's an APM 4953A and they've just got the two gates uh, connected in parallel. They've got the, uh, it's switching to, I think it's the negative rail. Is it the negative rail or is it, it's actually switching to the positive rail, I think. Uh, that's assuming, yes it is, because it does say positive. I'm saying that because the red wire does not mean positive, apparently. Uh, this black wire is also positive. But to limit the current to the LEDs, it's got 4.5 ohm resistors in parallel. That's quite a lot, so it's really going for pretty high output. It's worth mentioning that when you've got large arrays of resistors in parallel like this, if you want to make the battery last longer at the expense of intensity, you can remove a couple of these resistors, even just one would reduce it by about 25%, but you can also just basically scribe the top of it, because these are the sort of a conductive coating top of the resistors that forms that resistor. The mystery chip here, the question mark, is a generic microcontroller, possibly the Padauk type, you know, three or four cent microcontroller. It will be a cheap thing that's just been programmed up with fairly generic software to uh, drive that. It also has the facility with this uh, pad here, goes via track on the other side to this terminal, and this track comes down here, and it looks as though... This is for driving pairs of LEDs, perhaps for a sort of an alternative beacon function that it will construe between two colours or just have two channels of lights. Not really sure why. Uh, likewise, they've, they've put uh, other components in here. I'm not sure. They've just been leaving their options open, possibly for other power sources. I'm guessing. I'm not really sure. Um, they've just basically allowed for other things. Things that are interesting, this is a positive, this black lead is a positive coming from the 4AA cells. Now, because this is a buck regulator that uh, limits the current to the, to limit the, uh, should I say, that's not right, it's a boost regulator. Let's get this right, it's a boost regulator that boosts the uh, voltage from the lithium cells up to 5 volts the output. If you just stuck 6 volts uh, from the 4 AAAs into that, it would just bypass that completely and it would potentially cause problems because you can't really boost this. It's already too high a voltage. So what they've done here, and this also stops the, uh, the batteries being charged, the AAAs. You can't use rechargeable batteries. What they've done here is they've put two diodes in series just to drop the voltage slightly, to bring it down to probably less than 5 volts with fresh alkalines, which then means that that still can do its boosting, but it just avoids that over-voltage problem. That's why those diodes are there. It's a bit of a waste. You're losing over a volt um, at whatever current it's running at. And it also stops it recharging the if you use nickel hydride cells. But then again, that would be that never works that well with uh, the standard. Well, it certainly wouldn't work with the standard... Uh, voltage cutoff that the uh, lithium cells use. 4.2 volts doesn't even work with uh, three nickel metal hydride cells in series. Other things worthy of note. These two MOSFETs, they had me a little bit perplexed at first. They, particularly because they don't run hot, if we look at the circuitry, the MOSFETs have their drain connected to, am I getting this right here? Drain is connected to the battery negative. The load or the charge is connected to the source. And the battery positive is connected to the gate. I reckon 
Because these are just connected in parallel, I reckon that this is an anti-reverse polarity device. It's just polarity protection to stop anything going majorly wrong. If the batteries get put in the wrong way around, these simply won't turn on. And it's worth mentioning that while this chip was getting toasty hot, uh, these were just not even showing up in the thermal imaging camera, so they must be turned on fully and have a fairly lo low resistance when they're on. Other things worthy of note in this circuitry? The... I would say that, fortunately, when you've got this in the case, this little circuit board has support, this little uh, aerial sort of extension, extension circuit board. Otherwise, it's very easy to move it. And uh, if you're plugging it out a lot, it's possible these solder joints could break, although they are pretty big. However, once it's actually in position, it does actually lock that in place, so it shouldn't be that bad. So, um... In all, it's it's an interesting design. The the interesting features are the I mean it's it's fairly standard using the MOSFET to switch the bank of resistors. Um, oh, this capacitor here is just the decoupling one across the little microcontroller. Uh, most interesting features are the TP four three 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 power bank chip. I don't think I've come across that one yet, and these two MOSFETs that are being used to um, provide that polarity protection. Quite interesting. And it's a nice enough light. Uh, I may actually assess that for intensity. This uh, little bit of blue tack here was just to hold the circuit board in place while I took a picture. Um, yeah, it's functional. That's all, about all there is to it. Once you've actually reverse engineered it, it's all very straightforward with the sort of wasteful diodes for that voltage issue and then the sort of like the polarity protection. And that is it. Uh, could you change the cobs? I'm not sure. I think this looks fairly custom to this light. If it did suffer damage, you could probably get individual parallel 3-volt cobs and you could put two of them on it. Or I suppose ultimately, you could just get standard uh, superflux. Not, uh, yeah, superflux, these type of things. And you could put them instead just by screwing them onto that or gluing them onto this uh, material to change the LED sources if you so wanted. So it's quite neat. It's nice that it gives you the option of the double A's or the, the uh, lithium cells, but obviously the lithium cells are going to be the best option. The double A's are a sort of good backup option if you were working in the middle of nowhere with no way to charge this, and but you had access to a place that sold the double A cells and you could just put them in as that emergency backup. It looks reasonable enough. The flap seems to stay in place quite well, which is good. Uh, the little waterproofing flap. I'm not sure waterproof. I wouldn't submerge it or anything like that. It's not designed for that. It, but it's designed to be fairly splash and dust resilient. Yeah, it's a smart enough little light. It's probably got its uses for uh, for nocturnal or work or just working under bonnets or in machines that there's just not good lighting. So it's pretty neat. It's quite a smart little light.